All right, hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to stop all separations of trains on your HO scale layout. When I first started off in the hobby, this was a very frustrating part of it because my trains would just fall apart whenever I would try to run them. And I figured out one way to completely stop that from ever happening again. Just like the prototype, our models need a strong connection in between cars and locomotives to keep the train together. And just like on the prototype, we're going to be using metal couplers. In this case, I'm going to be using the KD number no. 5 coupler since it's die cast metal and it's very strong. While this might not be the most realistic coupler you can get, this is the one that I chose to use because it matches up very well with the Walther's Protomax knuckle couplers and I have a ton of Walther's cars, so that makes my life a lot easier. If you use one type of coupler on all of your cars and locomotives, it's gonna be much easier to keep your trains together. The reason that we're going with metal couplers is because plastic couplers have a little bit of flex in them, and when they go over bumps or when you're carrying long trains, they can flex enough to have the couplers separate from each other or potentially break. I just recently got a couple of these Athern cabooses, and I wanna replace the couplers that are on here with KD number no. five couplers. What you're gonna need for that is just a Phillips head screwdriver and a locomotive cradle. Looking on the underside of the car, you can see where we need to get to to undo these couplers. There are two screws, one right here and right here that are holding on a piece of plastic that goes underneath the coupler to hold it in place. All you have to do to access the coupler is just unscrew that, take that piece of plastic off, and then the coupler will just fall out. When you're doing this, try and keep the screw in this coupler box cover so that it's easier to put together when you put the new coupler in. In the box with your KD couplers, you'll get the couplers themselves and then those big brass springs. One of those springs needs to go in the coupler box. This is what's called a centering spring. The coupler will sit inside of this and then this spring will push on it to keep the coupler centered so it's easy to couple the cars together without having to fiddle around with centering all the couplers. So that just sets in place right here on what would be the top of the coupler box and you could probably just press it in with the screwdriver like that. Now this particular coupler box is a little bit shorter than usual so this spring is going to stick out a little bit farther than it would usually on coupler boxes so if you wanted to make this spring kind of disappear and not look so weird you could paint it black easily and then it would just disappear. Now we can take our brand new coupler and put it with this air hose facing upwards into the coupler box. You might have to wiggle it back and forth so that the spring gets out of the way and then it will just sit there. Now you could take your draft gearbox cover and set it on top of the coupler. Sometimes the coupler wants to fall out. So sometimes it's a bit of a challenge to get this on properly. Now, as you can see, if I move it to one side or the other, it's not snapping back into place. So I have the cover on too tight. All I have to do is just loosen it a little bit until it can move freely and center properly. When you're installing couplers like this, you're always gonna wanna check and make sure that that spring right there is installed on the coupler. Sometimes they fall off in shipping, but usually there's a bunch of extras in the box when you buy some. Now that we have the couplers installed on each end of this car and they are centering properly, we need to check the coupler height and make sure that that's correct. Coupler height is a big factor in determining whether your trains are gonna stay together or not. Because if one coupler is too high and one coupler is too low and you put those two cars together, they're not gonna stay together properly. To test the coupler height, we use a what's called a coupler height gauge. This is a coupler height gauge. These are very inexpensive and you can get them from Katie. You can also use this standards gauge, which also has a coupler gauge on it right here and right here, but this won't be quite as precise as the Katie one. When using the Katie gauge, you can see these grooves on it. It has two on this side and one on this side. Those sit on top of the rail so that it is sitting at the right height. So just get those onto the rail and make sure that it's sitting level. And then you can take your car, put that on the rails, and then check your coupler height. As you can see, this one is just about dead on, and that shouldn't cause any problems for us. Now, if it were extremely low or extremely high, there are different types of couplers that you can buy. For this coupler, you can see that the shank, which is this part right here, is right in the center of this front part, which is called the knuckle. You can get couplers that have the shank either on the top so that the coupler is lower or on the bottom so that the coupler is higher. 
And then you can also get little shims that will either go in between your truck and your underframe to raise the whole car up a little bit, or you can get coupler shims that go in the coupler box with the coupler to get the height precise. The coupler swap on this car was fairly easy, but now I'm gonna show you a car that might be a little bit harder to do. Cause not all cars are as easy as this little Atherin caboose. Here's another Atherin car. This one happens to be an Atherin RTR RBL box car in the Wisconsin and Southern Sargento paint scheme. And as you can see, there's no screws on top of the coupler box and there's no easy way to pop this off. For this particular car, you actually have to take the entire underframe off to be able to access the couplers. And to do that, you have to take both trucks off. So just unscrew the trucks on both ends. And then you can lift up on the underframe and it should pop off. Now that the underframe is off, we can access the coupler box. Now this car is a little bit more difficult to put back together. You have to take your underframe, flip it over, put your coupler springs in it, And then you have to flip it over, put it back on, and then take your trucks, put them back on, and just lightly tighten them down just so that it's holding the underframe on enough to keep it on the car if we're gonna flip it upside down. Now what we need to do is we need to flip the car over, take our coupler, press on the bottom of the coupler box, just to separate it from the boxcar a little bit and then we can pop the coupler into place. Now the coupler is in and now it won't come out. Now we need to do the same on the other side. Take the coupler, pull down on the underframe, make sure that it's in the right spot and now we can tighten our trucks down. Now this car is done, we can check the coupler height and make sure that it's gonna run properly. While there are many different types of coupler boxes on many different types of cars, these two examples should give you enough information to figure out how to do it on every single car that you have. This is the best way that I've found to completely eliminate any frustrating separations. I've had very, very long trains being pulled up very steep grades and I haven't had any problems. If I had to give one suggestion about the best way to do this is just do all of your cars at once and then every single car that you buy after that, as soon as you buy it, just immediately put metal couplers on it because then you don't forget to. I always have a fairly large stock of KD couplers on hand just in case I buy anything and I need to put the couplers on it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.